Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and we're back in here stroking on our clapper. All right, uh, when we left you last, we had increased our feed with the cutting edge. I, this is the bit. I pulled it out. There's no bit in here right now, and we were using this in here. And basically, this is a finishing edge that I put on this bit, and uh, I, I I just turned it to the side, and I was kind of using it as a as a um, a regular facing bit but it's not the angle of approach in fact actually we we'll talk about the angle of approach because we got the chips down here and I can't just pick up one chip but I can hold them like this and and then I can grab one sideways here with my calipers Okay, right there. I picked one up. A hundred thousandths. So we were we're actually cutting a face width of a hundred thousandths, even though we were only trying to go. I forget if it was fifty or a hundred thousand. Or I mean, fifty or seventy-five thousandths on the depth there. Um, but what I ended up doing is I just raised it up and I went across a couple times, and I I've got a real I I put a really nice finish on the other side. Not not my finish finish that I want to put there but a nice smooth level cut uh, just like this without the blem in it and uh, and here's a look at that all right well, I flipped it over and I kind of did some measurements here and here after a couple more cuts on the part just taking um, a 25 to 30 and then I did one with a like a 10 thousandths depth cut I went ahead and took my blank and I went over there and I hogged off uh, the end here and dressed this as almost like a turning bit for my lathe with minimum amount of reliefs. When you're working a straight a shaper and you're continually going in that same stroke in that same position there just as if you were doing a constant turning the it, it has to be impact proof as well because you're coming out of the part and going back into the part so shaper is basically an interrupted cut constantly um so you minimize on all of your clearances behind and underneath so that's what i've done and and actually i'm going to hold it up here just so you kind of see the bottom rake to the side that's that's laying flat on the part okay and and if I was to take it and just hold it there, that kind of shows you it's barely, barely off of that angle. So I'm going to put this in here so that I barely have enough lead angle. And then it doesn't really matter what's behind here. I just made it minimum. It makes everything stronger. If this is not such a pointy point and doesn't have such a great scoop and all of that, uh, it, it'll continue. And I'm really surprised. This, the bit, I could have kept using it the way I was using it. And it probably would have machined half of this height off of this thing without me even having to touch this. So this is a really good piece of, uh, it, it must be cobalt. It, it sharpens up like that. All right. So we're going to get this in here. And we're going to make this as short and stout as possible. Something like that. I'm going to get a, I got to get a look at it on the end here. And that looks good. I'm going to sharp, I'm going to, I'm going to sharpen. I'm going to tighten this up here. And now I'm going to pivot it. I like that. I'm going to bring it over and put it close to my part so you can really get a good visual on this. All right. All right, we got the bit in there. Everything is nice and tight. I changed the angle a little bit more aggressive on the clapper clapper box angle so that it comes back comes back away from or towards me. The cut's going to be on the leading side. This is the leading side over here. All right, so it's going to angle back 
kind of gives you a good look at what the bit looks like in there. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and touch off now. Now we're going to go ahead and feed it over towards me. There we go. All right, let's uh, let's get cutting on here. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the 50 because I think we're we were we were doing every bit of. 50,000 as far as the depth going and let's see how that acts on here Now that's a lot less strain on the ram and everything else. That's 50 deep and we're feeding it almost 10 thousandths per stroke. There we go. All right, I'm gonna roll it backwards here. Okay. You always gotta finish up with a couple finish cuts on on ductile material. You uh, tend to leave a, a coarse or a breaking uh, tearing finish on the uh, when things come and start to break loose at the end it's uh, it's not a real solid material that curls all the way to the last bit but it doesn't roll over a chip either so or a burr all right let's go ahead and check our overall thickness here and I got like 5945 there And I got five nine thirty nine there, so we got about six thousands six thousands taper in that. That's um that's pretty good. Uh, well, for 
1908 <laughs> reworking and you know I machined the dovetail on the ram but I hand lapped it into the housing and I never did anything with the uh, the knee and stuff uh, so um, yeah um, okay now that six thousands when we get nitpicky if we want to we could put a screw jack under here and we could we could raise this uh, a couple thousands and pitch it until until we get that straight straight away cut um, so when we get close I may actually do that all right that was a 50,000 de depth of cut and do we want to see if the thing can actually pull more than that or are we satisfied with 50 thousandths of cut you know we only have uh, we only have 900 thousands to take off of this thing um, heck let's see uh, let's see what it can do I think Still sounds like a rubber band to me all right we haven't stalled it we've we've gotten chatter but we're past the chatter point and uh and bits looking really good oh by the way too the other this this uh locking screw that i had here was coming and just barely touching this it didn't i'm glad i didn't crash it because that would have been catastrophe but i took it out and put it over there so um i don't know if any of you actually saw that um all right Let's, uh, let's bring it in here. I'm just going to control this by, uh, 25, there's 50, what's another 25, right? <laughs> okay, there's, uh, there's 75. Now, it may not take the full feed that we were doing. We might have to back off on that. But you don't know until you try, right? Okay. Now, that was three on that side of the uh, feed. Okay, and three, it's reading three on there. We may have to back it back down to two, but let's, uh, let's see what we got here. I'm going to bring it in by hand here. Sounds pretty good, don't it? Let's see if it'll take the feed. Yes, it will. Okay, we're testing this out see if we can get to a hundred thousands on the depth per pass and we're feeding it about ten thousands on the feed there so I'm gonna ease into it by hand first Here I go. 
Just a little bit of slippage on the belt. Okay, well, let's lighten up the feed a little bit. Okay, we'll lighten up the feed to probably one third of it. Here we go. About six, six thousand feet, seven thousand feet, hundred thousand feet. Not slipping the belt Okay, we got this thing cooking along now at a hundred thousandths on the depth and it's about six seven thousandths on the cross feed there we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna speed her up this is the speed we've been running I'm gonna go ahead and bring this over so it's ready to cut for the next cut I raised it up a little bit because I was uh, playing around with the speeds and uh, just making sure that everything was set and I had to put a belt tensioner on on there because the belt on different pulleys was different so I added a giant counterweight to the motor and uh, should be should be able to do the job now okay we got clint yes we got clint okay uh, let's pull up the tensioner and we're gonna jack it up to the next speed here and here we go Okay, now we're starting to hear a little bit of that spur gear from the pinion to uh, the ring. All right, she is all lubed up, ready to go. And we're gonna go ahead and crank in. We got a touch first, but I believe I was on a 75 here. Right, there's 75 yeah just dragging right there okay all right once around back to the 75 this is a hundred thousand dial up here so it's pretty easy to just do a hundred thousand all right we're gonna hand feed this until we touch Okay, and we'll put it in feed.
Okay, I'm putting it in neutral. Let's go ahead and bring it on up to the next speed. Here we go. All right, here we go. That clapper box now is hopping all the way. But you can hear some of the harmonics now. Okay. Now I'm going to switch it back to the second speed we had there, which was pretty well optimum, I believe. Okay, here we go. Plenty of material. Uh, we got a, another 150 after this cut. Come off the width and then we're ready to go to the next step on this uh, block here. Just getting ready for another cut there. I was guessing that I had about 250 to go here. Maybe a little bit less than that. But uh okay, five, five, four, sixty-five, five, four, sixty-six or so. With one or two thousands from front to back, and that was since the last time we flipped it over. Um so uh we're we're pleased with that. Alright, just continue on. Until next time, get her done. <laughs> 